So just shoot me a note if you would like the recording. So let me just, okay. If you can't share my screen, just let me know. I mean, if you can't see my screen. All right, so hi again, everyone. Thank you again for being here. My name is Zelma McCaffrey. I'm the founder of Work Bigger. Work Bigger is an online education and mentorship program that helps you get clear on the work that you want to do so that you can focus, get big things done, and ultimately love your work. I founded Work Bigger because ever since I could remember, I struggled to figure out what it was that I wanted to do with my work. I remember going all the way back to college, having to pick a major at Syracuse University, we have another Syracuse alum here today, and feeling really, really panicked at having to make that decision. Did anyone else experience that or, or go through that? I, I know this is a common problem for, for a lot of people. So yeah, Jackie. Um, thank you. It was a really tough time and essentially I remember sitting in my dorm room trying to decide between do I pick PR and political science or journalism or advertising and I ended up going with PR and political science because I had to pick a major and graduate on time. And I did well. I worked really hard in school and graduated and found a media job in New York City doing media planning and buying for Wyeth Pharmaceuticals, a big pharmaceutical company. And things were going well. I was super excited to be at my first job. I was like, this is awesome. Now I have a time to collaborate with a team. I can create, build, learn, and grow. But a few months in, I hit a roadblock. I started feeling disconnected and unfulfilled, and I couldn't really figure out what that was about. So I said, okay, let me push through. Maybe I'm just going through some sort of rough patch. And I stayed at that job for almost two years and then decided to leave and found another media job. This time I was doing media planning and buying for Parlux, which is a perfume company, an Empire State Building, and a few other, a few other clients. And things were going well in the beginning. I was excited to learn again. And then soon after, I hit another wall and said, why do I keep getting stuck? Like, I'm not fulfilled. I don't feel connected to my work. I don't feel like I'm making an impact. I continued on this path for about six years. I'd start a job, be super excited. I would then hit some sort of wall where I wasn't feeling passionate and connected. And then I wouldn't know what the next step would be. I really didn't know how to communicate what I wanted to do because I wasn't clear on it. So what was the result of this? Well, I lost a lot of my confidence because I was taking jobs that were coming at me, opportunities that were coming at me versus me being super intentional and knowing what I wanted. Then, uh, then I lost focus, right? Same thing, I was making incremental improvements through these positions, incremental improvements personally, but then also in the impact that I was having on the world outside versus massive improvement on one thing and truly making an impact. This, also one of the biggest struggles I remember feeling was I couldn't communicate what I wanted. So while I was in this stuck place, people would ask me, okay, well, what do you want to do? And I, and I didn't know what that was, which was a problem because then I couldn't find the right community to be a part of. I didn't know the messaging that I was using. And when I was speaking to potential employers, I didn't know how to express. I didn't know how to let them help me. So this led to me Figuring out what I wanted to do, it took me so much longer than, than it should have. So I said, okay, well, I'm gonna to go to business school. That seems like the next natural step. I wanna learn more about business, and I did. And while I was there, I saw that I wasn't the only one with this problem. I saw that almost 90 to 95% of my classmates were feeling super stuck and they were seeing business school as their do-over. So I asked myself two questions. I said, okay, well, why is this such a big problem? Why is everyone in this situation? And how can we solve it? without spending that $60,000 tuition, which is crazy. So there's a few things that I started finding out. I started doing a lot of interviews and research, speaking to people. Last year, I launched the blog under my personal brand, bellamccaffrey.com, which is where all the work bearer content lives temporarily. And I started writing about a lot of these findings. First, I found that what we're looking for, well, we're looking for the wrong thing. We're looking for passion. Passion is not, it doesn't anchor us, right? Because you can be passionate about so many different things today, and tomorrow you may not be as deeply connected to it. What we should be looking for instead is a mission. A mission anchors us because it's bigger than ourselves, right? It allows us to make more of an impact, and we're also deeply connected to it. It allows us to be in service, which is really key. 
It's really, really important when we're working from a place of service versus working from a place of, I'm interested in this today. The work that we wanna do is also an intersection of our interests, our values, and our strengths. And I'm gonna talk about each one in a second. After we get super clear on these three things, we, we, we then need to be really creative in finding the unseen solutions so that we can create the best opportunity that's possible for ourselves. And we need to be really strategic. We need to know what we want and how we're gonna get there. We need to have a plan. So your interests. Your interests are everything that you care about, everything that piques your curiosity where you say, tell me more, I wanna learn more about that. This is where your mission lives in this area, but there has to be a personal connection to it. You have to be super clear on where it comes from. Your values. Your values is what you stand for. And it's so important, once we're clear on this, decision making becomes a lot more seamless. This is our foundation and it really should govern every single aspect of our lives. Our finances, our relationships, who we hang out with, the workplace that we choose. I was choosing jobs and working for clients whose values were not in alignment with, with my personal beliefs. And that really was a big reason why I had such a disconnect with the work that I was doing. Your strengths. Your strengths is really important on once you identify your mission, knowing how you're then gonna go out and execute it, how you're gonna live your mission. It's really important that you know what your strengths are so you can leverage them to add the most value possible and then to also create buffers for your weaknesses. We have to know what we don't know so that we can make up for them. So how can we find our mission and then go out and live it? And this is what we're gonna to cover today. Two things that I've identified. First, there are frameworks. Frameworks that we need to adopt that really change how we think. Again, so we could find those unseen solutions and learn how to solve our own problems. And then support. Having that support is so critical, something I didn't have in my 20s. I didn't know who to turn to. So working with someone who can really give you that personalized guidance is key. So before we get started on the exercise, and I hope everyone has a pen and paper ready, I do wanna read this one quotation that really stands out to me. It's by Greg McKeon, the author of Essentialism. If anyone has read that book, or if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It says, clarity of purpose so consistently predicts how people do their jobs. Motivation and cooperation deteriorate when there is lack of purpose. When there's a high level of clarity, on the other hand, people thrive. So he talks about how purpose can really give us that focus that we need so that we know what to say no to and we know what to say yes to. Okay, now I want to get started on this exercise. This is all about identifying your uh, interests. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to time everyone, we're going to flare. This is a methodology used in design thinking. The idea is to brainstorm as much as possible, come up with as many ideas in a timed period. So we're gonna focus on interests specifically. I want you to take two minutes and list out all of the things that interest you. And here's an example so you can see mine. Oops, okay. So for me, I've listed gender inequality, the Black Lives Matter movement, the environment, education and creativity, mental health and career. And I'll give you two minutes, but feel free to write 10 or 20 or whatever comes to mind. Really brainstorm and flare at this point. And go. And if you have any questions, just let me know or write them in the chat. Okay, we have about one minute left.
Okay, and stop. All right, so now you should have a bunch of interests written down and it's completely okay if they're broad. I think this is a really good exercise, especially for people who are multi-passionate and have a lot of interests. So now I want to start thinking about, well, what do all these interests mean and where do they come from? So next to each interest, I'm gonna give you three minutes for this part. Try to connect it to a memory or experience or event that you had. And here is my example. Again, I just want to show you this. So mine, the way they're written here, are actually a little bit more broad. So I, I recommend that you be as specific as possible. I want it to save space and not crowd the page with words. So I want you to think about if, let's say, gender inequality is also an interest of yours, where does that come from? For me personally, I've had a lot of friends who struggled um, negotiating for raises at work. And I've seen that th that's been a big problem. It's been a big problem for me in the past as well, um, having certain opportunities at work. So it comes from a personal pain point. So next to each interest, again, think about the memory, the experience, or events that that interest is tied to. So I'm gonna give you three minutes now. And again, feel free to write in the chat if you have any questions. And we have less than a minute left. And try not to overthink it. Just write whatever comes to mind. If you're having trouble coming up with a specific event or experience, just write the first thing that comes to mind. We're going to have opportunity to dig deeper with this exercise too. Okay, and stop. All right, so now I want us to analyze this. So again, what we just did was we flared, we put a timer around it. The timer is really important because it keeps you accountable to brainstorm for, for a number of minutes, right? Because we can easily get lost in the brainstorming session. But if we put a timer around it, then we're more likely to keep ourselves accountable and to keep going forward. So, now, I want to start connecting the dots. I want to start analyzing some of the stuff that we all wrote down. 
So first, to which of these issues do you feel most connected? Right? So maybe you had six issues on there, maybe you had four, maybe you had eight or 10. Look at the events, the memories, and the experiences that you wrote down next to each issue and think about which one of these feels most uh, personal to you. So even if you cut down one interest, I wrote issues on here, it should be interest. Even if you go down one interest, that's progress. That means you're starting to narrow things down. So I'm gonna give you a minute to do that now and go. And you're not choosing one interest that you're, you're cutting down, you're thinking about out of the list of six or eight interests, which ones do you feel most connected to? So try to reduce, take out one or two interests. You don't have to pick one interest that you're most connected to. We're just trying to reduce the list. Okay, so we'll give it 10 more seconds. Okay, and stop. Okay, again, so if even if you cut down one interest, that's great, and if you weren't able to, that's okay too. Now I want us to do this timeline exercise and after this exercise, I hope we can start sharing some of our findings. Um, that's my favorite part. So look at this timeline here that I created. So the goal here is to take everything that you wrote down in your interests and in your memories or events and see if you could put it in a timeline format. This is my timeline. So you'll see it's a bit messy. On the x-axis, I listed the age, like from age six to age 33, and I started writing where a lot of my interests started popping up. So education became very big for me at a young age because I was super type A and always had to study and do well in school. So education is a big focus for me. Um, stress, stress and equating success with stress also started happening at a younger age. So you'll see that it's prevalent here from age 12 to in my 20s. The workplace frustrations I have here under my 20s and then the Black Lives Matter movement and the environment happened uh, later on in, in my life. So take now three minutes with everything that you wrote and see if you can lay it out in, in this timeline format. And I'm going to give you three minutes starting now. We have about two minutes left.
Also just want to call out, you don't yet have to um, find any insights yet. Right now you're just populating the timeline with the events that, that you listed across the interests. Okay, and stop. All right, so now we're gonna continue analyzing, right? We wanna focus a little bit more, we wanna be selective. So here's a list of questions that I want you to think about, and I would love um, if anyone, after we do this portion of the exercise, if we can start sharing each other's insights and what we're seeing, because I think we can learn so much from others' experiences. So I want you to think about now, do you see any themes in the timeline? So again, I circled mine here. There's, it, there's a big cluster from 22 to, to 33, basically, where a lot of my pain points started happening. So do any events or experiences make up a large portion of the timeline? Do you see any clustered areas? In, in, in what you wrote down and what's your biggest takeaway. So just spend some time now reflecting and thinking about what all of this may mean for you specifically. And I'll give you three, min three minutes to do that. Okay, about one minute left. Okay, and stop.
All right. Does anyone want to share their insights, their, their timeline, any findings, your story? Jill, yes. Share with us. So, wow. So right before you called time, I came up with one final sentence. I was one of the people at the beginning that said, I want to get out of my own way. And through doing this, I realized, this is what I just wrote down right at the end. I've been trying to get out of my own way my whole life. Like, I thought this was just, until I got on this call, I thought this was just like an incidental thing that was happening right now. Um, no, I have always been trying to get out of my own way with all of my interests. So some of my interests I'll just briefly share are like travel and professional development, for example. Um, and so travel, I've been doing it since I was 15 internationally, but everything was always a struggle. Like my parents said, you go to Spain with your high school class. And then the whole thing was horrible the whole time. It was so stressful. And then with my professional development, it was like, I have this long held belief, which is, which is probably part of what's in my way now of uh, that work needs to be hard and I need to be mentally and physically exhausted by it and stress. Like I've somehow equated those things. And that also, um, kind of funnels up into the getting out of my staying in my own way, my whole life thing. So this was like, while maybe for some people on the call, maybe not such a big revelation to me, this is like a huge deal. My gosh, thank you Paul, for sharing that. So were you able to see that by listing your interest in the timeline format and then seeing that it was consistent? Throughout? Yes. Yeah. So like I've never, and you know, interest like professional development, I'm a career, um, career development coach, Bill and I go way back. So like I work with people on their career development and stuff. So I've always been interested in it. Um, but then my other interests that are like outside of work stuff, I never tied them to the work stuff like travel and um cooking and uh volunteering and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um so it was interesting to put on the timeline both like quote unquote work related things and quote unquote hobbies and be like like another example is I, I was a science dork as a kid and i was like i'm going to marine biology camp and then like the whole time i was there i was so stressed about being there i never really actually enjoyed it mm -hmm. and so just seeing it all, all of my hobbies and stuff is like something I've struggled through. It's like big deal. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it's interesting you called out because it's all connected, right? All of our interests, even outside of our day to day are connected. So seeing how then that interests that you maybe don't think are directly related to, to your work are a part of what you do day to day and then how you are holding yourself back in some ways. So. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so excited to see we have a few more volunteers. Uh, Stephanie, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, unfortunately, I do have to hop off. So I'm looking forward to hearing everyone's responses when they get back because similar to, I missed her name, who just spoke. Um, it was quite interesting when we did the timeline and I realized everything that ever related about my career, I was always really sick during it. So like when I was in college and I was going for my degree, I was sick. Um, when I went for my certifications, I was sick. When I got into my career, I was sick. To the point I had to stop working because I got, I mean, I was in my 20s thinking I was going to have a heart attack. I went to the hospital thinking I was having a heart attack and I wasn't. So I quit my job. I traveled and I had a great time and I came back and I did it again and I've been sick. So I guess what I never pieced together was every decision I ever made about my career made me physically sick. Wow. Wow. So thank you for sharing. That's that. nice to know now. <laughs> I wish I would have known that like 13 years ago. No. So you can kind of connect the dots now. That's really, really fascinating. Yeah. And for you too, was it laying it out in the timeline like that, that helped you see that it popped up consistently? Yeah. Like I didn't, like I remember being like, and just random sicknesses too. Like it just never dawned on me. Like starting from high school when you're taking your SATs, how I got so sick taking that exam. And then I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing because similar to the last one, last person that shared, I thought if you just, it yielded so many different benefits for working hard, but like it physically has taken its toll on my body. Hmm. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of, um, 
because I also always used to equate success with stress. Jill hit on this too. So I'm wondering too, if there's something for you there. Yeah. So. It was an interesting exercise. Yeah. No. And thank you so much for sharing that. And no worries at all. If you have to, if you have to jump off, I can definitely send it to you after, but thank, thank you for, for sharing that. That's really, um, it's good to hear like your experience and how this helps bring, you know, new insights to light for you. Absolutely. Thanks. And Lucy, do you want to share your, your timeline and your insights? Um, yeah, so a lot of what surprised me, my biggest takeaway that was that a lot of my interests started younger than I thought I did. And I didn't always recognize that because um, those interests have changed form or like I've changed my mind about how I approach them. Um, so originally I had plotted Black Lives Matter at like 25 because that's when the movement really hit New York or when it really hit me. And then I remembered, oh, actually when I was 16, that's when I was doing like a lot of journalism about the black community. And I had not really connected the two because just my thoughts and ideas about like, um, you know, how, how I've grown as a person from each experience was just really different um and the same with kind of a more uh, uh so like lately i've been really interested in perfume and then i remembered oh wait that was the thing that i was really into when i was 15 <laughs> and um you know i had kind of forgotten about that too and so there are some of those interests that i feel more confident about now um and uh, there are other interests that are also researching, but I feel less confident about them. Like I want to get back into writing and editing more, but it's been a long time and I feel unfocused. And so I'm thinking about, you know, my new questions, my next steps are really to think about um, the interests that I feel more confident about now and like, where does that confidence come from? Um, what's changed? Like, how did it help articulate my values? That's awesome, Lucy, thank you. And you jumped a step ahead, which I love, because that's exactly what I was gonna say. So after you have these insights, right, there are certain interests that you feel more confident about now, that's a great step to now feel more grounded, right? To identify your next steps within those interests. The ones that you're less confident about, we'd have to dig deeper, right? Because we've only been chatting for a couple of minutes here. Um, but what I'm hearing you say, if you're feeling less confident about certain it, interests, if there's less of a personal connection there, if you're unsure, and I want to clarify, there's less confident in, in that you want to dig deeper, you want to understand why you're less confident. If there's less of a personal connection there, then it's okay to kind of put those interests to the side. So it's another way to get more focused on what you want by thinking about the ones that you feel more, the, the deeper personal connection to. So I just want to make that distinction. And um, I'm, I like that you did this already. So right, what are the next steps? What are the new questions that come up? Because this is, right, this is just the beginning or really just like scratching the surface here. So there should hopefully be, this hopefully should spark new questions for you so that you can figure out, okay, well, what's next? Where else do I need to dig deeper? So in a sense, you're kind of guided on, on which path um, you need to continue exploring. So thank you, Lucy, for sharing that. We have time for a couple more. Um, Allison, I'd love, I, you posted in the chat as well, I'd love for you to share what you found as well. Yes. Um, yeah. So in the, just the interest of full, just this is my second time doing this exercise for everyone on the call. Um, and like doing it a second time was like, like the first time was great, but then the second time was even like, I got even more out of it. And um, so kind of something that kind of came to me was that um, in like my different lists, um, something that came up like over and over again was community um, and interconnectedness. Um, and I realized that kind of what I want to do is more building a more 
interconnected global community through kind of my interest in environmental and social justice, um, more actively civically engaged, like political community, um, you know, examining what it means to be human through like the arts and education and travel um, and kind of going back through um, my timeline is that whenever I'm kind of struggling is that when I'm craving that kind of more connected global community and whenever I feel like and then when I find that those communities and kind of create that for myself that's when I kind of feel kind of more active and more um, connected to kind of my mission um, so just being able to articulate kind of like that really comes down to kind of creating kind of more interconnected community um, is something I kind of haven't like I have connected but haven't connected to my other interests and like that's my way of doing that um hmm. so yeah I feel like you know feeling a sense of belonging kind of you know connecting to that um those bigger questions of what it does it mean to be human um like really came up for me I in the second that. time <laughs> yeah no I love that um so how I'm curious as to how this second time was different for you than the first time were you able to dig a little deeper this time around because you'd already kind of done the initial work the first time around you started scratching the surface and now you had a chance to dig even deeper yeah I think just making the connections came more naturally to me mm -hmm. um like in terms of interest like I created more interests that I hadn't wrote down and I was like oh yeah I'm interested in that too and um like just making those connections quicker um and then like kind of I even have a side by side of my timelines and just like how those things overlap um you know something that like for me is like what started is like I took like an astronomy course when I was like eight years old and so like connected to that like universal um connection it was kind of on both and then kind of Jewish youth group and then um you know um you know different communities like high school theater um like the group that I created at um, Davis um, in college, um, kind of those different activist groups as well. Um, and just kind of connecting those to kind of the overlap of like exploration. Got it. I love that you got super, super specific with your memories too. That's really, yeah. that's really helpful. So yeah. Thank you. And, and definitely kind of like those memories, like or so like I realized that a lot of my memories actually stemmed a lot more than just one interest. Hmm. So. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. So we have, um, we have 10 minutes left. If Jessica, if you want to share your experience, we can do that. If we can do that real quick, I would love to, and then we can, we can move on. I do have one more section to go through, not an exercise, but want to share some more information. So Jessica, feel free if you still want to share. Yeah, I'll just go really quick. Um, so themes I saw, there was a lot of fashion, craft, art, drawing, music, starting pretty early. And pretty much all the situations I was would start maybe a class or do something like that and then get paralyzed and see all the people around me who were doing really well and wonder, oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this kind of thing. And then the takeaway was really that, you know, creating new creating something new, creating new knowledge even, is always really paralyzing for me. Whereas, you know, designing a process, finding a system, finding an execution, ex executing on something, even if it's the same set of skills in the art world, but just executing something else is much easier for me. Um, so I guess the question that I raised was, you know, is it, does it become a question of, you know, how do I unblock whatever's blocking me from making, or is it, how do I embrace what I'm comfortable doing, which is designing systems and processes? Interesting. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. I'm just trying to think about um, your questions. How do I embrace what I'm comfortable doing, you said, or what was the alternative? Yeah. So it's like, do I try to unblock whatever is blocking me from making things, or do I let it go and embrace the, the thing that I'm more comfortable with? Got it. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. The only thing that comes to mind immediately is like, what action can you take in either, like from either bucket, 
to help you move in one direction or to help you dig deeper with either direction. So thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I love hearing everyone's stories because I think we can learn just so much from others' experiences. And similar to what Jessica and Lucy did, I do want you to think about like what new questions do you have now after having these insights? So try to think of that um, as a next step. So I hope that now after this exercise, you have greater clarity on how getting super clear on your interests, values, and strengths can lead to better decision making and can help us get unstuck and, and find that focus. So I want to take a couple of minutes to share some more information about Work Bigger. So Work Bigger, as I said earlier, is an online education and mentorship program. It's starting in April and it consists of four different aspects. First, we have frameworks and lessons that help you get super, super clear on your interests, your values, and your strengths so that you can get clear on your mission. It's similar to this framework here, but there's a lot, a lot more of this. So again, this was just scratching the surface. And then we have a framework that helps you take action, right? So you identify your mission, you know the work that you want to do. Well, then how do you go out and live that? So that's what we work on. You get four hours of one-on-one -on -one support with a mentor. This is critical because the mentors help you have the breakthroughs. They help you connect the dots. As you see, sometimes this work can be a little bit tricky to do on your own, right? Because you can get really deep. So how, what, what are the breakthroughs? How do we connect the dots? And that's what the one-on-one -on -one support is there for. There's a community of mission-driven students. Um, I am absolutely in love with this community. It is extremely diverse. The, the students now are from all over the country. Some are even outside the US. It's still pretty small and we're very tight knit and everyone is extremely diverse. We have students from a marketing background or finance and tech or whatever you name it. You also get an accountability partner to keep you going throughout the whole program and keep you on track. And then I, of course, will be with you every single step of the way to make sure that you're making progress and that you're getting the clarity that you need on your next steps. Bonus strategies. So what's really critical in living out your mission is creative problem solving and knowing how to negotiate. So we can identify the work that we want to do, but then we want to go out and get it. And we want to be able to negotiate the best opportunity possible for ourselves. I'm such a big believer in negotiation and something that I've been doing throughout my entire career. So what I'll be covering in the program is what I like to call how to negotiate without losing friends, fans, or job offers. Because negotiation is really about one, building relationships that are successful, and two, also making sure that you're getting the highest salary possible. So we cover that in the program. How to build a personal brand is another bonus strategy. Having a clear mission statement, getting super clear on what you wanna do is gonna anchor your brand. You're gonna have more focus because you're gonna know what you want, you're gonna know who to target. But then what else do you need to do to stand out to employers or to clients if you're freelancing or you're running a business? So we're gonna cover that as well. You graduate with, you have a clear career path. You know what to pursue and why, so you're, you feel super grounded. And ultimately, you have that career that you love. You finish with that powerful mission statement that's gonna inspire employers and also help focus your personal brand. I can't tell you enough how I have students come up to me and say, I use my, my mission statement when reaching out to so-and-so employer when I was in this interview, and they really got it. Because what you're doing is you're connecting on a higher level, right? You're not focusing on the day-to-day -day activities, you're connecting about something bigger. You're talking about making an impact and you're talking about working from a place of service. And that's really what they want to hear and how that connects to them. You get skills to be a more creative problem solver. So what I love, Allison did this exercise twice, and that's exactly what happens. Essentially, you start to think more deeply and more creatively so that you solve problems differently. You start to ask yourself new questions. You start to see insights that weren't there at first. And this is the most coveted skill because with the future of work approaching, technology moving at such a fast pace, it's the self-awareness that we need and creative thinking and problem solving that are really mostly valued by employers because that's really what fosters leadership and collaboration in the workplace. 
You get improved focus and decision making, so less overwhelm. That confidence that is so important in keeping you going and making sure you're pursuing the right opportunities, a strong sense of purpose, um, a lifetime in the community, which I can't stop talking about because I really love, love this group so much, and the negotiation skills and the framework so that you can increase your earnings. The program is valued at $2,700 with everything that you get. But early applicants, um, you get the program at $7.99. The deadline is March 17th. And for today only, I'd love to offer two hours of extra one-on-one -on -one work. So that's a total of six hours of one-on-one -on -one work versus the four. Again, that's today only if you apply, if you submit your application on time. The frameworks and the lessons, the community, the accountability partner, and of course, I'll be there every single step of the way to make sure that you're getting your results. If you're still undecided, definitely email me at belma at bellamccaffrey.com. I think you all have my email now. Um, and I'm also more than happy to put you in touch with someone who's in the community already and has gone through the pilot if you want to chat about their experience. I'm really looking for students who are really driven and really ambitious and really want to make an impact through their work. So that's why uh, there's an application process because fit is important. So if that's you, I would absolutely love for you to apply today. I'll send all of this to the follow-up email, but definitely reach out to me with any more questions or you want to chat further. I'm here and around the rest of the day and this week and would love to connect. And just want to thank you again all for participating. I, this is one of my mottos, ask more questions because it leads to better answers. Um, so thank you. And I really, really appreciate you taking time out of your work day to, to jump on. So if there are any questions, we have a couple of minutes, so let me know. If not, we can connect offline as well.